I'm Vikas Khanna. I'm a chef, and I'm I'm quite lazy. Yeah, I'm seriously telling you. I'm I was happy selling bhaturas in Amritsar also, but I'm okay now also. But I feel unless somebody punches me on the nose, I don't have any ambitions. I started my life in Amritsar in 1971, and breaking barriers. I thought that one of the greatest profession in the world is cooking. While everybody disagreed, and you're talking about many, many, many years ago, where nobody would send their kids to culinary colleges, and, and they thought this is the work of women, or predominantly people who don't matter. My grandmother took me to Golden Temple often, and I saw the magic of food, where the richest Canadians. Only Punjabis will react to that. <laughs> Americans, they all stood in the same line, cleaning, prepping, serving food, and they also ate like that. I thought, what could be a greater institution in this world which can bring all of them together? You have women wearing billions of dollars, you know, being donated there, but you saw the humility. To the greatness of such an institution, and food was the connecting force. So I said, "This is the thing I'm going to spend my life doing." And little did I know that uh, cooking is much more than that. Running businesses and food is much more than that. And very young age, uh, my mom just told me she's in the crowd. Today is her birthday. I'm a happy birthday. <laughs> She's 76 years young today, and um, we started a small business back of our house called Lawrence Garden. We did kitty parties, and uh, we couldn't charge more than 20 rupees. And if somebody has Punjabi relatives, they can tell you that they eat a lot of meals, and um, <laughs> they eat a lot of food. <laughs> and we did per head, and that was my training ground. A lot of people say you shouldn't focus on that. Your education starts when you go to CIA or Cornell or uh, hotel management schools. But your greatest foundation starts right there in the back of your house, a kitchen without a roof, a room without an air conditioner, where we seated people and we gave them food for twenty rupees, as much as they can steal and eat, and fill up their purses. That was my greatest training. But little did I know that life had different plans. I went to hotel management school in Manipal, and then in two thousand I moved to US. It was a really a breaking barrier for me to be very well established, doing caterings in Amritsar. Left everything overnight. December second, two thousand, I moved to New York because my brother gave me a book, Jonathan Livingston Seagull, in which a seagull learns how to fly and hunt. He said New York is the only city. I had no clue what America was. Nothing, and tough. For an artist of Indian descent, person of color, we are called there. And 9/11 happened, and I decided very consciously that I'm not going to stop cooking Indian food because I feel it's an extension of me. And we started doing a lot of work. Tough life, absolutely, but it's even tougher if you do not get whitewashed. I'm going to say this openly. I know this is an international platform. If you get whitewashed, you're just there to please people. I wanted to cook Indian food when many of me, my colleagues, and everyone totally said Indian food is not going to be there. You're never going to be have a Michelin star Indian chef in America. We can tell you that for sure. It took me back to my college, my own college, where my my teacher told me that we are training you to work under white people, and so that they can get Michelin stars. I said, "Why not? We are teaching Indian cooking to us. They think, 'Oh, there's nothing as Indian cooking. We are preparing you so that you can be working under white people around the world as a labor force because they are entitled for this glory.'" <clears throat> At that time, I didn't question it too much because there was a little thing in our library in college where there were Michelin star chefs, all middle-aged Caucasian men. I said maybe that's the norm, but I was lazy. I accepted it. I said, okay, that's fine. We'll work under them. But I was cooking was my Indian food was most important thing for me, and I figured out that I have to find a way to do this properly. 
I went to Paris to train after America in 2008, and a chef tells me that anyone with a darker skin can only clean, do deliveries, or manage stores. That really took me to the heart. I said, now I'm going to come back to Paris and scream on these streets that I'm a Michelin star chef. We go back to New York, puts a team together. We opened the restaurant December 2nd, 2010. And within nine months, I received my first Michelin star. I wanted to normalize this, that nobody should say, suddenly an Indian chef has won her. I wanted to make this as a voice to be counted, to be heard. And that is what I felt that God has given to me by winning it six consecutively years. Still, I, I think I'm the, there are few Indian chefs now, and I feel that this should be normal in guides and not be an exception. This should be the rule. Damn rule. <laughs> and thank you to the chef who told me that brown guys can't cook. And every time I post a picture of, on Instagram of my cooking, I said, dude, you can't cook like this. I'm going to tell you, make a pulka. Damn pulka. <laughs> An Indian woman is not even looking at it. She's like, okay, here's the pulka. See the puff. And everybody's like in the Western world, how did it puff off like that? What was a leavening agent in that? There was no leavening agent. It was water, flour, salt, and love. I realized that maybe I was given this voice to do something more and exploring writing books. And um, so you're right, but I've written 39 books. Today, this week, I launched a 39th book on Karthi Anyama. <laughs> Every book I've written is attached to a cause because I felt that I cannot rise alone. I need to uplift many around me looking at me, even if it, I'm not the perfect rule model, but still, I'm a rule breaker. Making films was important to me. Suddenly it became important, way more important because I felt that I have the voice in two greatest countries in the world and I should use it. I made my movie Last Color in 2020. If somebody's seen it, it's on Amazon Prime. <laughs> With Nina Gupta, possibly her best performance ever. And then I realized that a movie could do that impact. The movie was picked up by United Nations in New York and it was shown at the headquarters. And in, on June 14th, I was invited at the Congress in United in States of America, in Washington, D.C., to speak about widowhood, that why reforms need to be made about widow's life. There are 350 million widows around the world, and somehow they chose me as the global ambassador, a guy talking about this just because that movie hurt people so much in the Western world in a good way. And I think that is the beauty of it. Karthi Aniyama's story came to me on a small tweet. I followed her for four years. We made a movie on it, and we just got eligible for the Academy Awards. And I feel that is the most important thing I can do to my career. We don't go to schools to work nine to five. We don't do cooking so that we can get other chefs, Michelin stars. We need to get it for ourselves. But today in this room, everybody has a smartphone. Agree or disagree? This movie was made on a smartphone. Like, entire research. But the movie, the cinematography, we have Omid Ganath, Omi Ganatra, I don't know where is he, he must be with a camera somewhere. He's here, we have a line producer, Dipali's here. My mother is the producer of all my work because she produced me, so nobody can question that. <laughs> and I feel that for us to find invisible stories is why we are educated. We are not educated just for houses and cars and better privileged life and wearing better brands to make other people or other companies richer. We are educated or we are given platforms and voices so that we can be the voice of many people who would not be heard. Karthiani am I just one. Everybody is around you where we see that this is invisibility. This is why I really want to show a documentary which I can make being a chef that all it takes is a heart which is willing to sacrifice and hear the universe telling you the story. And you jump into it. And I want that to happen to my next generation, coming generation. Karthi and Yama is an inspiration not only for kids, but for the people who, who stop dreaming after some time. There is no expiration to your dreams. And that is what Karthi and Yama told me. She is going to be my forever barefoot empress. Thank you so much. <laughs>